on blue bills and I won't stop until the cash pit. They're like fall leaves in the back pit. Tell it out of my face. Hey everyone, welcome back. April got some parts. And we're gonna get it started today. Or at least we're gonna try to get it started today. So we got the fuel cell, April's hose. Yep. she's got and some fittings so we're gonna try to get the fuel cell mounted and then run some lines up and tie it into the mechanical fuel pump on the carbureted engine to see if we can even get this thing fired up we're gonna need plugs wires oil and some other things so we got to run to the store real quick we're gonna get that and then hopefully we have everything we need to fire this thing up we're actually gonna rob the battery out of the car outside Woo! there it is free parts Oop, there it is Oop, there it is <laughs> All right, grab that thing out of there. Oh. I'm gonna get tetanus. Yeah, see, no problem. It even has a handle on it. Almost there it is. Ever start max. Jesus. Careful, don't let those lugs touch metal. I honestly can't, can't get this it. Up. <gasps> Alex got Alex. it. Ended up finding this aluminum fuel cell that I think will fit in the little slot in the back, but we go with that, and then this nylon braided hose. This is a lot better on the fingertips and then some AN fitting. So this all adds up pretty quickly in price, but everything will be AN on this. So if April ever ends up going to an LS, mm. which will probably happen mm. eventually, mm. we'll already have at least a dash eight line ran all the way to front. All we'll need to do is plumb in a return back to the tank. It's got a fuel sending unit and stuff on it too. So if she wants to see fuel level in case you want to cruise this thing around maybe. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, all the time. See, hopefully this plums in real easy and we can get fuel up to the carb. No problem. Hopefully that mechanical fuel pump works. Hopefully. It's been sitting for a minute, but. I uh, don't know if it's dry routed or not. <laughs> We're about we'll to find, find out. out. Went ahead and pulled this rat eaten spark plug wire off of the spark plug. And here, I guess we should probably pull a spark plug out too. Take one of those with us to make sure we're getting the right kind. Let's see how they look. Mm. Look like it haven't ran in a while, huh? Yeah. We ended up getting some Valvoline, the oil filter, some plugs, and some plug wires. We're hoping these work. Uh, since this thing has the straights on here, like so, because of the manifold, these are actually for a big block 454. That's what the guy kind of had that had the straight plugs on it. So that's what we're gonna try to use is hopefully these will do good for us and get rid of all these old crappy ones, throw the new plugs in it. What do you want to start with? Trying to get that thing in or trying to get this all figured out? I think we need to work from the rear forward. All right, pop, a, pop the fuel cell in there. That'll be the hard part and this yeah. is all the easy stuff. So I guess we'll uh, get the back cleared out and start getting that fuel cell put in there. Took the little cover off, get the spare out. And then we're going to go ahead and pretty much, I think, try to delete all this crap for all these lines from the factory fuel system, but we need to kind of chase it out and see where we're at. But the new fuel cell should sit right where that's at. Pretty decent. Let's see how good my measuring skills are. Roar. Golly. Trying to film and move? Oh, yeah. Got to do it all here. Other than that little plug right there, that's kind of a pain, but let's see how we look. Yeah, that's plugs on that bill. Mine will be facing the rear, right? Yes. Okay. So if I grind that thing down, we should be all right. We're reaching there and cut it off. So just it looks like all we got to do is cut these two bill. tacks. Yeah. Cut and then just yank that out. Get that out of there. Then that thing should sit flat, and then we'll be we'll be looking pretty good. I think. Yeah. Then we can either go all the way Let's up, see. and then that gives area to run the lines. I'm thinking probably come out, go over, knock a hole, like kind of where they even well, have that grommet already, and then run the lines down through the car. We're going to need a big enough room for two lines, right? Uh, we actually only need one of those feed lines. Okay. So we're capping Because this initial line going up to the motor here actually looks like it's got a decent sized hole that it goes through already. Yeah, so if we get that removed and stuff, we might just be able to fish the line right through it. Yeah, maybe. That'd be nice. Well, I guess we'll get that thing cut off so this thing can sit flat. And then I'll end up either coming up, I thought about welding on some aluminum mounts or doing some straps. So once this thing's sitting flat, I can get the car running, just get the fuel up there, make sure everything's right. And then I'll go ahead and build some mounts for the actual tank, but it can at least just kind of chill right there for now. I don't know how long fuel's gotta be in a car to be green, but that's how it, oof, it stinks. Yep. But part number one. Yeah, all right. We're moving some Not bad. Stuff. So now we have a little spot over here. 
a little spot right here that we can go through. Uh, we were talking about there, but really the line shouldn't have like a little P-trap in it. So we're thinking we're gonna come out this hole right here and then run it along the car. Quick question for you though. Is that gonna interfere with any of the area y'all might be concreting? Because mm. it is double walled. Like, is y'all just gonna be concreting yeah, this? It's it not in the that. way. Should be all right there. So we'll, we'll take a look at it and see, and if not, I can pop a hole up here. We need to look at the rear end too and see kind of where it's going. And here to here is a yeah, whole separate area section. than where the tank was. Okay, so uh, where are we gonna put the fuel line? That was something I was just thinking about is because I'm so used to having electric pumps usually. You know, it's not a big deal if you go to a pump and then it goes over like the rear end or whatever, but on this really it needs to kind of gravity feed that little pump all the way, I'd assume. Uh, at least that it helps and then you don't get air trapped in the line and all that stuff, so. I don't know, I guess we'll we'll try to run it as flat and downhill as we can up to the pump. Sounds good. Sounds like a point. I got a blessing. Let's talk a whole lot, no one damn well, they really can't press us. I notate it on leaflet. I'm really up a few levels with it. Like way, way out the way from them. Can't see me, you can't battle with us. E and J in my Earl Grey hood bunched up with the cheese eggs and a dumb face. No stun of shade, still turned up. Then had it pop in in broad day, that's Ivy. So ended up cutting the full piece off. Now we're just left with this little piece here. But like, that's it. Like, this is what causes cars to take so long. Like, oh, just set the fuel cell in there. No, nope, no, nope, we're gonna spend an hour trying to get the little nub off there. So there it is, got it opened up, got that out. We'll just sand this flat and then it'll sit back over it. But yep, that little sleeve right there is what was fighting us. They must drop that in from the other side, weld it in. Now those are done. Scrap pile. Now we can put your fuel cell in here. Yep, Alright, grab that fuel so let's see if it'll fit in there now. Perfect size. Not bad, I think we'll slide that back. That thing is warm now. So if that sits there, then we can come off of here with a line and run it over to hopefully there, and run it down the car. It might work out. If not, we'll knock a hole somewhere else, but that might just work out over there. Perfect. Oh. So I already put a cap here, and then we got this 90. I think we're gonna go right there, shoot it over, go through the hole, and then run it to the front of the car. So what we're gonna do is take the 90, go ahead and put the hose on it, and then feed the hose all the way through the car, so at least we start with one end done. So, ready to build sure. some A in line? Yep, show me how to do it. All right, so we want to put this end here on that hose there. Other way. Put this open in. Put it, try to see how you're, try mm -hmm. to keep these kind of in as you like put it on around mm -hmm. it. Kind of work that in there. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll cut this with like a four inch cutoff wheel and it leaves dust, you gotta trim it or whatever. The best way to cut this is with like a, uh, a big hose cutter from Harbor Freight or whatever you can get them. But if you have these little hairs, you can just take a pair of dikes, try to trim this off. These aren't very sharp now, are they? So now you just push the hose all the way in until you see the hose butt up with the threads right there. I usually pull it back just a hair. So if you're in there, it'll cause you to bind up. Now it's sitting nice and flat. And then you take the other piece of the end fitting, it's tapered, it goes in, push that into the hose, and then you start threading this in. But a good thing to do is put a little anti-seize here before you thread this in, so I'll do that right now. And what you'll want to do is put, bring it in here, put it in the vise. It's always nice if you have some aluminum soft jaws so then you don't mess up your nice high dollar AN fittings. Once you're in there like that, I'll let you do this part. So then take that, just try to work it in, I'm going in a little crooked. There you go. And you just keep working it in until it starts to thread. Now we need a wrench. I really need a set of AN wrenches. It's a set of tools that I haven't bought yet that I, I really need to buy. 
so you got the adjustable A-in wrench. Then so you just keep tightening these two down until they butt up right there on the end, and then you got a nice tight seal. A few moments later, and I think you're, I think you're about there now. Okay, that's tight. So now we're gonna go ahead and put this on the fuel cell in the back, okay. and run the hose through there, and then we'll bring it up to the front up here. Oh, getting those laid out. Nice, nice. And then once we get it up here, we need to come up to the fuel pump. So we'll just run it up through there, and then we'll have to build the final piece uh, right up here. A bunch of rocks. I want to blow that out later. Just try to feed it through nice and easy. We're going to end up having all this hose outside of the car. We'll just have to run it along the inner frame rail when she gets it all in there. I ended up ordering 20 foot of this line. Usually that's enough to get to the front of the car and then some. and then we just want it flat and we'll end up tightening that down so i think that looks pretty good not bad huh looks yeah it looks good i might have chose the right one maybe sure whatever you think <laughs> running the line right there goes up over the cradle and then down from the rear end cradle along the frame rail here up under where the original line was running and then we get up here and it runs right up there into the engine bay so we'll get it up there, measure it to the fuel pump, rub it down, cut it, build it, and then put it back into place. Well, Alex did find something really, really cool. Manifold wasn't bolted down. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna have to find some bolts for that to uh, get it bolted in there. For it to have been running, it don't sure don't seem like there's much uh, hooked up. So hopefully this thing, this thing will run for us. So some of you might be asking, James, how are you gonna hook an AN line to a fuel pump that just has a barb on it? So what we did is, cause I wanted to run AN line for future proof in case we put an LS in it. Let me find the fitting. I bought one of these little guys right here and it's 8AN on one side with barb on the other. So then all we gotta do is run a little piece of rubber hose from here to the fuel pump down there. And then I think it goes, where is that at? Right there, yep. So more or less, we're gonna to try to mount this somewhere in here and then bring the hose over from here to there and then we should have a fuel line. This hose is really close to the barb fitting here. So I'm just gonna cut this, use a hose clamp on it, kinda of like how they had it originally, and use a hose clamp to go onto here. Not do all the adapting right now, I'll just save these fittings in case we wanna clean it up or these are perfect once we start going to uh, EFI up here if we do like a, uh, a sniper or one of those EFI conversion units or whatever. So then I'm just going to go ahead and cut it, and then once I get that cut, because I'll use my little cutoff wheel, then I'll need to go back there and probably spray some like brake cleaner or whatever in the line, and then just air it out, blow it all out, blow out all the crud, and then we should be looking all right. I use my little cutoff wheel. Like I said, that kind of makes us dirty. We'll blow it out and stuff, but... So cuts are pretty decent. Fuel line is ran up there and hooked to the fuel pump. I don't know if the fuel pump's gonna pump, but we have fuel line and a fuel cell now. Yeah, now we just need to get spark plugs. Spark plugs, plug wires, nice. header and, bolts. And uh, it looks like we're gonna need to run and find some header bolts unless they just so happen to be with all the parts, but I doubt it. it looks like after a few of those things, maybe we can grab the battery, see if this thing cranks. I don't even know if this thing cranks or not. Hopefully it'll crank, and then we'll worry about if fuel's getting to the carb and if the carb's gonna do anything. See if this abandoned small block Chevy Jaguar fires up for the first time in who knows how many years. I, I'm sure it's been a long, long time since this thing has ran. So we got a fresh set of plugs in both sides. I think the plan is, is to get some new exhaust uh, headers or something, maybe even do some hood exit zoomies. So maybe the Jag can be like Bernie, I don't know, but we might, uh, small block Chevy zoomies are extremely cheap. So we might just run the set of those. Would this be considered a fire hazard? 
I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe? <laughs> we made it back, got some bolts for the manifold, so we'll get those slapped on. And then also, I went ahead and got some fuel. Got five gallons of the old pump gas, so we can throw in the fuel cell. Then I went ahead and picked up this handy dandy deal from my dad. This uh, actually will go into the distributor and turn over the oil pump so we can prime the engine so we don't dry fire it. We can get some oil up into the top side. Since this thing has been sitting for so long, it's probably gonna be a good idea to get some oil into this engine before we crank it over dry. First of all, what a terrible spot for a cooler cutting the crap out of my arm. But uh, we're, I'm down here turning the engine over, trying to find TDC. We found TDC, but the timing mark is right up there, pointed at the passenger fent tire, when I think that timing mark on the uh, crank that's pointed right there is supposed to be pointed more or less up in this area. If you guys can see my marker right here, there's some timing marks right down in there that is on top of the uh, balancer. But that mark on the balancer is still, you know, down there at like the eight o'clock spot, but this engine does have the timing marks at the top of the engine just under the water pump. But we know by turning it over and filling compression come out of that hole, we're at TDC, I think, I hope. Everything seems based on what we know and how to do it. We're there, but that timing mark's not lining up. So what I'm gonna do, Take a marker, make our own new little TDC. Who knows, maybe the uh, balance got changed at some point and it's for one that reads off pasture side. I don't know, but uh, we'll make a mark. We'll start there, we'll prime the engine, and then we can always come back to it. At least we have somewhere to start with what we're thinking where TDC is. This is a great time to explain how much I love EFI. Crank sensors, and uh, usually it's a little bit easier to figure all this out. I mean, this is all basic stuff, but a lot of it you just do on the computer and stuff and if I can find this mark and spin things over and all this crap uh, a lot of it with reluctor wheels is already figured out and all that crap but uh which you should still verify timing with the newer engines on LS's and all that blah 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 but either way we'll see how this car fires up but I think I still want to stick with the FI on the long term <laughs> Four, three. all right we're learning today three. so we kept going and it kept pushing Six. out pressure kept pushing out pressure now you guys can see it right there see the the scribe and the balancer is now lined up with the timing marks up top which were a little past it the only thing that's kind of weird is now the distributor is pointed that side of the engine when we're at when the we're number two here. so yeah i'm not i'm not sure here I'm not i'm not in love with the situation based on some of the other stuff we're supposed to be seeing or doing or whatever but we're gonna pull it out, prime it, at least throw a timing thing on it. We'll try to start it, maybe it fires right up. Maybe if not, we'll, we'll keep having to mess with the distributor and timing and all that stuff. But uh, at least we have a good base to go off of and have some sort of idea of where we're starting and we'll go from there. Small block Chevy, just learning new things, carburetor, distributors, what the heck is all this crap? Don't let it go anywhere. So I started already and just, I mean, a few turns and then it felt like it got a little bit of tension in it. So I think that's kind of when it primed the pump. Now just letting it ride real easy. Maybe do this for, I don't know, a minute or two. This just got done charging. So it took us about perfect amount of time. Go and set this thing in here. Hopefully when we go to hook it up, we don't get any big sparks or fuego or anything. We should probably uh, go ahead and find a Little fire extinguisher just in case before we uh before we get too much electrical things going on even though it's carbureted car there's still some still some wires that can get hot and melt getting closer getting some fuel put in here filling her up filling her up <sighs> try not make too big of a mess okay hey, not too bad such a big tank it's like hard not to miss the hole that's what she said <laughs> All right, so we'll get five gallons thrown in here. It should be enough to hopefully get it fired up. And then what I think I'm gonna do is pop the fuel line off of the fuel pump up there up front and then make sure that some fuel dribbles out of the, the line. If we need to pick up the tank to help like gravity feed it, kind of prime the system, we will. So with this one being a burnout machine, at least this fuel cell is nice and safe, kind of in its spot. 
uh, where the truck's kind of out in the open. I think this will be good, and then if she wants to drive it a little bit, she can. We'll see. I don't know. And just this, the cell, when I measured it out, it fit well instead of going with just a little five gallon like Quits and Bernie. Hopefully, this car's a little more multiverse for April to play with, huh? Maybe, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get it running first before it does much of anything. Yeah. But really, if it runs today, that's been pretty good. I mean, yeah. we cleaned it, and then we put one day's worth of work into it right. to try to fire it, so. Yeah, not a lot of work had to be done. Hopefully. If it, if it runs. If. <laughs> big if. All right, we got to test out Alex's blow strength. <laughs> so, to prime the system, we're going to try to pressurize the tank just a little bit and see if we can get some fuel up front because we still don't have it. I thought if I raised the tank up high enough, it'd push it through, which it could. We could still lift it, but it's kind of heavy. So, we'll try that, and then uh, if not, we'll get the air compressor, but I need to fix a line on that. Whoa! Got it! We have fuel! At least to the fuel pump. So, good deal. Good job, Alex! Practically ready to do burnouts. Oh, definitely. Practically. Ready to go. No seat needed. You see fire or sparks? Turn it off. Okay. So just, just turn the key to the run. See if anything comes on. I heard something. Uh, something clicked. Click. All right, now just bump the key real quick and then back off of it. Hey, hey, hey. We have it's slight movement. <laughs> I think it's going to start. Right, we're going to press on the throttle pedal a little bit. Go, go like all the way. I'm all the way to the she top. is. Just pump it a few times. All right, just go ahead and turn it over for a little bit. Bump it, T hit the key. No, you're good. We're, we, it's gonna have to pull fuel all the way up from the... the fuel. Can you see on that filter? It looks like it's getting wet. All right, let's let the old small block Chevy starters, they don't do well with heat, so you gotta just give them a little bit and then let them take a break. Chances are, if I put some fuel in the carb, though, it's going to backfire, but, hey. This RPM gauge is moving. Yeah, a little bit whenever you're turning it over. No, it's moving right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's ready to go. Ready to rip. It's, it's idling. It's like a Tesla. You can't even hear it. A little fuel can't fix. All right. Let's see what we got. You're ready to turn it off if it kicks a big old fireball okay. a little bit. Huh? What? Not bad. It's gonna start. Now we just need to uh Oh my god. Now we just need to make sure it's getting fuel. And then we might we might be in business. Not bad. Wow. It didn't sound terrible though. It didn't try to backfire through the carb, so. I mean it definitely could be off, but it tried to start where we're at. We'll just keep keep going until hopefully it tries to run on its own. Um all right. <laughs> Give her a little bit more of the old go-go juice. Alex's like, whoa, stepping back. You don't like this, Alex, huh? No. I have too much facial hair. <laughs> I'm going to catch on fire. I was like, I'm not Wait. built to be around fires. <laughs> All right, just bump it real quick. You're good, go ahead. Oh, baby. <laughs> Who wants to so bad? But I'm sure it's just not getting fuel up there right now. But uh, we'll keep playing with it. We'll keep playing with it, we're close. We're getting there. Hey, it, it made noise. It made a whole lot more noise than this thing has probably made in a very, very long time. All right, let her rip again. Do you want me to like rub it a little bit this time? You very little. If it, I bet it don't really do much. It doesn't look like your throttle cable linkage is really doing much either. <laughs> you tried to give it a little there? Yeah. yeah. She gave it one good pump, and when it started to die, she gave it just like maybe an eighth of a throttle from yeah. what I could tell. Just doesn't have enough fuel. Look well, at you in there, though. Eee. <laughs> Get 
Give this thing like 10 pumps. It's like f starting up a little lawnmower after it hasn't ran in a while. All right, try to try to see if that does anything without us adding fuel now. Okay, so like. Just go ahead and crank it over. Okay. Give it like 20 pumps. Try that. Can you throttle open a little bit as you. Well, it's actually there. I think it's got like that electronic. Okay. I'm gonna throw a little more fuel in there. I highly doubt we flooded it, but. <coughs> I think we're just running off of residual fuel. What? I don't think we have fuel in the carb yet, but go ahead. Can we do it again? Yep. When I hold the key down, it stays going. Well, that's because you keep the starter engaged. Oh. I hear like water running. But it wants to start. Like if it has fuel in there, it wants to start, so. Mm hmm. 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 Let me pull out the laptop. I'll tune it right up. <laughs> so looking at the fuel filter, it looks pretty not clear. I don't know. It's like reddish and it's all kind of gross. I don't know if I can really... I, know, I might have to turn it over and see if I can see anything kind of going through it, but I might just pop the uh, line off either up here or down there. Just put a new filter on it. And then really from there, we should be good. That'd be the only thing that... I could definitely see that fuel filter being pretty, pretty icked up at this point, especially with how gross that fuel was that you can't got out earlier. Good thing we have a spare fuel filter from Old Kleitsky over there for race week. So we might uh, just stab this one on there. And then at least we know we got a new fuel filter. And then we might have to replace some line or whatever, but yeah. That is like that reddish color and it's gross, so I don't think we we're getting any fresh fuel through there quite yet. So we'll try to get that popped off, and then definitely needs a new, new fuel filter. Then we should hopefully get some fresh fuel up to the carb. All right, guys, check this out. Ready? <laughs> That's supposed to be fuel, huh? Nasty. Woof. Just go ahead and crank it, and we'll see if we get some fuel in the fuel filter. I don't know if it's gonna try. To see. Hold on. Yeah, it might be smart to That's remove the light. <laughs> Small mishap. All right, let's try that again. Without a mishap. Well, it's got, I mean, it's pushing some fuel up into it. I mean, it's definitely not filled it up yet by any means, but uh, all right, go ahead and do, do some more. Here are the pumps. We're starting to get some fuel at least through there. It still looks like it's kind of dirty from probably what was in the pump, but uh, starting to get there. All right, go ahead and hit it. Go ahead and pump it two, three times and try to start it. All right, I think you're trying to go too much throttle. Let it try to start and then give it a little bit if you want. Still need some. Go ahead and pump it like 10 times. I think carbs just nasty dirty. Okay, go ahead. Just went ahead and pulled this fuel line off here and it's like falling apart as we do it. But that looks dry to me. So uh, might crank it a little bit and see if it'll even push fuel past there. I mean, the fuel filter is like half full, just under half full. But it looks like the fuel filter is kind of getting what it should. I don't know if it should completely fill that or not, but uh, I don't know. It's definitely, it doesn't look like it's coming all the way up to there. So I'm going to drag that down. Maybe right, we'll try to turn it over a little bit and we'll see if we kick some fuel out of there. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. All right, puke some out there. At least it's trying. Just don't know about it when it's, uh, if it's up, if it's pushing enough up. 
but maybe I'll try to blow push some stuff uh, spray some cleaner up through here maybe there's a little blockage in here or something I went ahead and cut this off pulled it back checked all that reattached it hopefully even if it leaks right there I want to be mad I sprayed some carb cleaner brake cleaner whatever up into here a bunch of junk ran out so at least we're starting to chase it as long as this thing but it looked dry give her a few more tries and see what happens right, let me give it just a little splash I'm not working the carb so hard or the starter so hard all right go ahead and uh was that a splash or one little tiny drop it was a little drop it wasn't much at all so go ahead and try it out. I wouldn't try to work the throttle. I would just just pump it a bunch of times and then like just let it start and see if it wants to try to idle. Okay. Go ahead. Oh. We're definitely all right. We got a fuel leak, so. At least I know we have fuel there. We're probably gonna need to replace that whole line. I'll try to get it sealed tonight. Oh, that this thing sounds cool. excited. Hear that? Oh yeah. A little bit later. And now we have a nice piece of AN line. It comes up to the carb, that's kind of loose, so might need to tighten that down. Uh, and if this does not work, maybe we need to go into the carb, maybe we need to run some cleaner through it, maybe we need to play with it a little bit more on some of that stuff. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's just fuel delivery. This is no different than an EFI car. You need fuel, air, and spark. We obviously have spark. We obviously have air. And fuel, well, if I put it down the carb, we have fuel. So that seems like that's where we're at. That's what we're battling. So just keep chasing it until you know that it's getting fuel. got a full fuel filter so it had to have been some shit right up through here that was causing it to, to not work well without any throttle try to crank it over again yeah try to fire it right back up <laughs> all right it's i'm gonna throw some belt dressing on this unit a little spicy there. A little dry. Alright, fire back up, see if the belt squeal goes. We might know how to mess with these carburetors and small block Chevys. I don't know. Um, Got a little bit of heat in it. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Can't wait to do Put some Put your foot on the brake. To see if you can crank it back up. And just throw it in reverse for a quick second. And then you might have to kill it before you try to put it back in park since it don't okay, have no so, brakes. So. Crank it.
works. <laughs> well, that's freaking bad. Yeah. You'd almost be able to go drive this thing. <laughs> almost. Awesome. <laughs> that's what's so crazy with these cars is like, at some point in time, somebody decided that they were gonna like unhook a header, mess with the AC, and like pull this thing apart from at some point running, years later, here we go, we buy it, pick it up, put, I mean, eight hours today and probably six hours last time we messed with it to clean it and all that stuff. And now we got a running car and what, about $400 worth of fuel system to get this thing uh, good fuel and maybe another $100 worth of plugs, wires and fresh oil and the freaking thing runs. You go half of the 1500 would be 750 and then the 400 for everything. Uh, so 1150 and then, oh, yeah. yeah. So I mean, just barely over a thousand dollars and we got a running yeah. what's possibly a driving car, but <laughs> it's not yeah. not exactly complete, but hey, it goes in gear. Yeah. It fires or runs, it idles. It revs up, it shoots a fireball out of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally this sat in that guy's yard for a very long time and 400 bucks and really it's like two days worth of work and think it at least been running and movable i'd assume i mean i i mean it would move i think right at this point i mean maybe another couple hours and well bleed before the brakes we drop it on the <laughs> ground we're definitely gonna need to go through the entire brake system because yeah yeah the brakes are about like the fuel system pretty pretty gross and dirty and uh yeah well this is Bone dry. Bone dry. So, <laughs> yeah, we got a few things to work on next time, guys. But if you want to see more from April's burnout build and hopefully a burnout coming, I mean, hopefully soon, we got definitely some more stuff still to do, yo. Do though yet, but uh, yeah, it's, it's where we're at. And I couldn't be more happy. Second video. I hope you guys are enjoying it. It fired up. We had some fireballs. So, if you guys want to see more, you know what to do. We'll see you in the next video. See ya. Say bye. Bye. See you in the next video. <laughs> <laughs>